Actually, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 26. It's going to take us a few minutes to get there, but I feel, I just feel the land bubbling. I feel the land percolating. I feel the land coming alive. I feel the land agitated in the spirit. I feel things that have been status quo for generations are now suddenly waking up and coming alive. Y'all been doing some good work in the spirit up here. Amen. And I just feel like you're getting ready to see a lot of the fruit of your labor. So I, I want to share a few uh, about wells tonight, about redigging wells. Um, and I want to read you a little portion of a prophecy that was given by this this prophet, very little well, very, very little known prophet. You probably have never heard of him. His name is Kim Clement. Ever heard of him? He prophesied this a number of years before he passed away. Um, but this is what he said. He said, there are wells that have been stopped up. They've been closed. And God said to him, the, to, to Isaac, these may have been dug by Abraham, but now they belong to us. This is what the enemy says. Therefore, God says, will you do as my servant of old did and dig a new well? Let the enemy keep his wells. God said there's a new fountain of life that comes from a well that's been dug. It's been dug by the praise and the proclamation of the people of God. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. They sang to it, and the nobles and the princes, they dug. And as they dug, so the water came forth. The Lord says, sing to the well. I feel like that's what you are doing tonight in the presence of the Lord. And in another part of the prophecy, he said, fear not. For all the wells that have been captured and taken by the religious system, he says this, let them keep them for now. Everybody say, for now. This prophecy was probably 15 years ago. He said, let them keep them for now. For you've dug a brand new well, and it comes, in it comes the healing fountain. God said, miracles as the body of Christ has never ever seen. Uh, do not say we've heard this before. This comes as a result of the pioneers of the prophetic. And I think that our ministry, Christian International, has been a big part of pioneering the prophetic movement. You'll get to hear from my father-in-law in about a month as he comes and, and ministers to you. But he is known as the father of the modern prophetic movement. He's 88 years old and still going strong. Um, he, uh, at the end of every year, he calls me and he says... How many miles did you get this year, Jane? Like it's a competition. And I'll tell him how many miles I got, and he'll go, oh, man, you beat me by 10,000 miles. And I said, well, I think you're 30 years older than me. I think you win, okay? <laughs> he, is, he is a go-getter. He says that he's going to live till he dies. How's that? He's planning on preaching till he's 95 years old. So this prophecy actually refers, it says, this is as a result of the pioneers of the prophetic that have dug and dug and dug and said, even though we have lost ourselves, we will continue prophesying to the well. We'll continue prophesying, spring up a well, even though there's nothing. The princes and the nobles, the prophets and the apostles, they dug and they dug, and the people watched as they sang. Now the well must spring up. God is saying this over New Jersey, and even as you guys dis determine to have a school of the prophets, you're going to be start prophesying to ancient wells. You're going to start prophesying to things that have been in the land for generations and for even for centuries, and it says now the well must spring up. It must bring forth the most miraculous signs and wonders that shall appear, and the Lord says that when this happens, things are going to break out and go on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and it will not be stopped. Turn to your neighbor and say, it will not be stopped. Now, I felt to read that because I feel like you guys are at that precipice right now of wells breaking open. You're at this precipice right now where God is waking up the land, shaking up the land, and in the middle of that, he's waking up the watchman. New Jersey is the watchman state, and several things that the watchman watched over is they watched over the city from the city walls. They watched over from the ramparts. 
They built these huge watchtowers and they watched over the fields of harvest. Come on, how many of us are watching for our cities? How many of us are watching for the harvest that's coming in? Come on, and they also had to watch over the wells because the wells were very, very important in the, in the land and they're very important even today. Because we have to understand this, is that he who owned the well owned the land. Now think about this spiritually. He who owns the well owns the land. He who controls the well controls the land. The well represented the rightful ownership of the land. It represented provision, growth, Increase, expansion, supply, prosperity. And if the wells were for some reason left in disrepair, if nobody was watching over the well, or if they left the well, think spiritual wells, if the well fell into disrepair, listen to this, anyone could come and claim the well and take possession of the land. How many spiritual wells have we as the church left in disrepair in this nation. So the battle is over the wells. The wells represented the covenant with the land. And so here's the thing is that if we keep the wells open, the enemy can't come in. If we keep the wells open, like what you're doing here, every time you gather is you're digging the dirt out of the well. You're keeping the well open. You think you're just worshiping, but what you're doing is you're keeping the well open. How many moves of God have come and how many moves of God have gone? How many revivals have sprung up? I mean, we live down in the panhandle of Florida where we had the Brownsville revival. Elizabeth is a product of the, the really, really impacted by the Brownsville revival. Anybody here go down to Brownsville? Go down to that. It was an amazing time of revival. But sadly, um, that church has followed the pattern of so many different revivals that have come through through the centuries is that revival breaks out and the, the places fill up. And then when revival is quote unquote over, the originating church ends up smaller than when it started, when revival started. That's been a very sad pattern. And I think that part of the reason is because we've got to learn how to marry revival with reformation. We've got to learn how to marry this awakening anointing with the reforms of the spirit and the present truth that God is pressing us into. Because if not, what we get caught up in is we get caught up in something that is powerful, impactful, emotionally stimulating, but doesn't have any lasting effect in the territory. Everybody say territory. 